Finally, season three. Oh no, are we gonna get another recap episode? I feel like we are. Kind of yeah, we are. We are. This prestigious school was built to train the heroes who protect our citizens. I love how Best Genius is second. I'm gonna skip ahead. Because if this is another recap episode, although if I know the show at all, I would love it. Like I'd literally probably cry. And I'm working hard to fulfill my dream of being a true hero. And he's doing a great job. He's doing a fantastic job. It's amazing. Others with a smile on my face. <laughs> the smile thing. Oh, nice. I like it so far. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. I see you, Mineta. Why did my eyes go right to him? <laughs> Some villains. Yeah, I wonder if this will be the, the continuation of this villain arc that we're on. There's been a lot of setup for the villains. I like this opening so far. Hell yeah. That was great. I like the song a lot and I like the, the, the villain showcasing. That is sort of the most exciting thing going into this season is that we've gotten a lot of hero growth in season two. But towards the end there, they really packed in the villain growth as well. There are so many core elements that have been built. It's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out between the UA students who we love and their teachers and the villains who are increasingly getting more of a purpose and seem to be growing on their own. You know what I mean? People grow, you know, even villains. <laughs> they wouldn't really be exciting or formidable Welcome if they didn't, you know? To our summer special, All Might, the journey from number one hero to UA high school teacher. Today, we'll be looking back on All Might's achievements and his incredible rise to... You know what? If you don't like All Might, it's a terrible world. Smiling thoughtlessly, as if there's no one he can't save, like he's undefeatable. And also, this is sort of hard to explain, but I feel like, I think some people are very sensitive to spin, or things that feel like propaganda to them. I definitely understand that instinct when you feel like people are working you emotionally to repel that really strongly, because it feels like a loss of control. It feels like something unwanted entering. And I think that's especially the case, or especially true, if you've had experiences in the past with authority, let's say, or societal messages that caused a loss of trust. And I think it's not totally unhealthy. You know, it's good to have some kind of a, an immune system, a thought immune system, because there are always messages being blasted at us constantly. And people want us to believe what they believe because it moves us into doing things for them and that can be exploited. But it can also be taken too far where any time one feels like there's an idea coming at you or a symbol coming at you or a message coming at you, the reaction is like hatred or disgust or anger or thinking a person is a total phony, you know? In that sense, there probably are people who really don't like All Might because they feel it's hollow. And we happen to know that on some level it is. For people like that, I feel like it's, it's often frustrating to hear the same things repeated over and over again. It can be very lonely and that can make you somewhat resentful of the status quo. So Shigaraki's fear about like peace and everything aside, I could definitely see that being a thing in this world where All Might is everywhere, all the time, talking about smiling. Izuku Midoriya. We got, uh, until middle what's his name? Kurugiri, Kokugiri, doing the <laughs> Izuku Midoriya recap. During the Hosu incident, he and his friends fought the hero killer Stain and won. How do you know about that? That's classified information. I'll show society just how fragile their sense of safety is. Hmm. Hmm. Game start. We've got a training camp in the woods coming up. Nice forearms. And I want to be as prepared as possible. Is it me or is he growing a little? Maybe? How many views does this video have? Look! He's got more! Does it have more views than Despacito? <laughs> Probably. Thanks, All Might. And one million of those views are just Deku. Mineta, Kaminari. Hey. Hey, I like how they just became friends. Come to the pool with us. That's consistent with the movie. Why don't you start by giving me a run? Look at them working in the summer. A's abilities, if I must. Let's start with Yuga Aoyama. It's tough because it's definitely a recap episode, but I feel like I can't, I can't skip it because there's good stuff in here too. <sighs> Minoru Mineta. <laughs> that sigh though. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. We were wondering about the form we turned in a few days ago about the pool. Oh, the school has granted you permission. <gasps> they are getting bigger, except for Mineta. You said you wanted to use the pool for endurance training, correct? Make the time count. <laughs> right! Why do I feel like Mineta's not only here for endurance practice? That's a great idea, Mineta. Wait for it. It'll be the perfect way to train. Wait for it. If it had just been us, we wouldn't have gotten permission to use the pool, I bet. This works. And there it is. <laughs> of course. Moment of our lives. Defining moment of our lives. Plus, it'll be free, so we'll save money. <laughs> That's way better than being cooped up in my room. Leave it to oh, me. Oh, Mineta. I'll start working on a formal proposal right away. All the girls in their swimsuits. It's our duty to support our class. If only they would channel their energy, you know? On the other side of this door! You are slow poke. Is that Ida? Damn. He's a lot bigger than I thought. Why am I so focused on the character's muscles? <laughs> Why 
I did not while our plans are ruined. But I gotta be honest. Should have cut Deku in on it. I didn't know you guys would be here. I can't believe there's not a they heard he was coming. <laughs> foiled again. You know, school suits are still pretty hot. I can't help but wish that Manetta was more. You know, like, I really like certain elements of his character, and I think some some things in him, like we saw in the tournament, are really cool and unexplored concepts for characters in shows, especially romantically. It's just that he he gets crushed by like the pervert trope. I kind of can't believe I'm talking about this again, but honestly, it's interesting to me. And I think there's something there. I think this attraction actually can be something really powerful. To be very clear what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm not talking about like objectifying other people. Where I think there's utility is turning the energy and focus inward to help create an ideal that you can aspire to. This is so weird, but so for example, right? If I'm really attracted to someone, it's hard not to put them on a pedestal a little bit. And you imagine that, oh, they can have anyone they want. From there, it's sort of like, like a light is, is shined on me and I can see, oh, well, here's all the ways other people might be more desirable than me. Or here are the ways in which I don't come across well. And that can be painful, but also it's kind of amazing because suddenly through just like natural processes, a gateway has opened in me understanding myself. And actually now I have things to work on and target. And what's great about that is a couple things. One, it makes it clear that it's not really about the other person as much. It's about what I want for myself, which is good. It reveals things I feel that I myself am deficient in and therefore gives me clear paths to things I can work on that will not only make me feel better about myself, but hopefully actually make me better and stronger. So I'll always take those moments. Anything that gives me a desire creates an interesting path for me to follow. And I think you follow enough of those pathways, you end up becoming someone of real value. And interestingly, I think that's the way you actually get the things you want. That's the way you attract really great people and make connections, you know, is by being someone who's like interesting and has good things going on, not just in external things, but in the way you compose yourself and just being the kind of person who grows, that by itself is amazing. So in summary to this very weird rant, as superficial as this looks, I feel like this can be turned into something beautiful, even if it's not beautiful for Mineta and Kaminari, the way it is in the show right now. Kaminari, Mineta, <laughs> nice work. I'm proud of you for suggesting more training. You're an asset to our class. Yeah, these aren't the assets that they were thinking about though. Don't just sit there. It's time to come sweat with us. <laughs> no way to cool. This wasn't the plan. Yeah, especially for Mineta, like, as somebody with no no abs in a school of ab-filled students, pool day exercise is good. All right, let's take a 15-minute breather. I'm upset by Mineta's lack of abs. <laughs> Legit, I'm, I'm angry. I couldn't imagine the two of us would get along, much less become such good friends. Uh, much less I'm being honest, fight a, a villain in an alleyway. <laughs> you back then. And yet, during the practical exam... Right, right. This too is recap, but this is a this is nice. <laughs> I remember this. I, I focus on this very specifically that Ida was already taking inspiration from him in that first day. Even though saving her meant she might not pass. That speaks well of Ida too. I respect people who like can find the things in others that that they like or that they lack, you know, and then actually try to make it happen. You may have thought that, but you never gave up. Not during combat training either. <laughs> it's a very ham-fisted conversation in a way, but recap is tough. I get it. Hey, I got your message. Sorry I'm late. Took a while to convince Bakugo to come out. That's not very surprising. How did he do so, it? Deku. He told Bakugo that Deku was you a better swimmer than him. the best between us right now? Huh? No, that's hmm. not it. Actually, you know what? Swimming race. I'm gonna annihilate you, Deku. Through swimming. <laughs> Somehow. Turbo! He didn't he swim at all. The water. Yeah. It's called freestyle swimming! <laughs> what the hell? Oh, sure. I thought like literally none of them are swimming at all. You're supposed to be swimming! Yeah, yeah. The quirks thing was a bad idea, honestly. Midoriya. Now it's time for my flashback. <laughs> it's time for the final race. Bakugo, Todoroki, Midoriya. As winners of each heat, you'll fight for first place. And hopefully this time you'll get in the water. Don't you dare hold back like you did at the sports <laughs> festival. Yeah, this should be like one of those champions champions of the universe scenarios. Winner of this wins everything forever. This random pool race. Most important moment in their lives. A single blast is all it'll take. No, you gotta get in the I'll water. Slide past them. They're not even gonna touch the water, are they? They're gonna just leap right over the whole pool. <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> yeah. Why aren't they using their quirks? Aizawa. It's 5 p.m. Let them settle their race. Are you questioning me? <laughs> no, 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 sir. <laughs> so sorry. Those two aren't just your opponents, you know. They're our friends. Good Shut point. Up. I don't care if they're my classmates or not. <laughs> I won't let them get oh ahead of me. Oh my god, it's so awful. I feel so bad for Kirishima. Oh? You're oh, are we at the beach? <laughs> the UA entrance exam. Oh, it's just the beach recap. Young Midoriya? <gasps> oh my... What are you 
doing here? Are we both at the beach right now? Is there any garbage? You too can become a hero. Don't get my hopes up if you're not gonna give me my beach training. This is where my journey began. Yeah, in hindsight, there's a lot more information that all my could have shared, but young Midoriya, the summer training camp will be tough. Try your hardest. I will. Oh, no beach training. A man can dream. <laughs> do do do. <laughs> Remember those days? Missed that song. I don't know, these ending songs, they capture the, the slice of life stuff really well. The openings, they, they capture the action, the passion, the heroism, and the endings capture, like, the friendship. <laughs> Which, honestly, you know, I love I love both of them. They're great. I like this comic, comic style. It really captures that summer feel, doesn't it? Can't wait to get out of this damn hotel room. <laughs> This is damn quarantine. I want to watch fireworks at the beach. I actually am going to the beach next week. It's making me so thirsty the for that. Of the training camp oh, we got an after after credit scene. Only the upper management of UA knows where it will be now. So Ooh. Just keep it to yourself. Ooh, are we setting up for like a spy or something? That wouldn't surprise me, honestly, if there's someone in there. And he knew that, right? He knew about the stain thing. For me. That's right. We're about to start playing a brand new game. Game start. So I really like the ending song. Well, it's not my favorite song, but I think visually it was really nice. I love the, the comic book style and that, that summer feel. <laughs> so this episode is obviously aimed at people who maybe are new to the show. Or a refresher for season three, I guess. But still nice. You know, the show does what it does well. And the moments are still moving even looking back. But I don't think that's enough for a full video. So why don't we do episode two as well right now. And this is where the games really Beneath begin, I guess. flashy superhero society lurks a dark underworld. Every time we've driven the villains back, they've retreated to the safety of the shadows, regaining their strength. Yeah, and coming back stronger. Because everyone's got high expectations of you. He's sort of a, a Deku parallel in that way, I guess. The board is set with my pawns and their prey. <laughs> Finally, time for the real game to begin. Speaking of games, yeah. About the shadows and what the broker was saying about people sort of being on the sidelines and waiting for opportunities to step into what they actually want to do, in this case, villainy. One way to look at that, I think, that actually makes some of the, the heroic elements in the show more personally important, I think, even at a very small and local scale, is that there's sort of this tipping point that I think happens very quickly. You know, it's definitely true that even in the best of times or even in the most uh, well-functioning societies during times of peace, it's not that everyone has suddenly become good or peaceful. It's just that the balance is such that the people who would do harm feel kept in check by people who who would resist that or would not do that. I can't help but think that probably the, the tipping point is actually very, very fragile. Like it wouldn't take that many people to shift one way or the other for things to radically change direction. In fact, I think there's a lot of precedent for big things happening because of a very small minority of people who become very dedicated to what they're doing. And that can be both a good and a bad thing, just depending on what, what that focus is and what the drive behind it is. And so, you know, I talk a lot in these videos about what some people consider to be like super idealism. And while I think sometimes in these shows, it can be hard to connect with them in a, in a way that seems directly relevant because these are at such a large scale. I actually think that that tipping point is the reason why it's so important and why even just focusing on like one's own individual life and doing good on a very micro scale actually is really important and does have large stakes, if that makes sense. And while I can at times be idealistic, I think it's important to think that way just because that is one of the defenses against that tipping point being as severe as I think it is. It's possible that each person actually does play a critical role in that. It's impossible to know for sure, which is part of the problem. And I think that lends itself to us underestimating the effects of our actions and justifying certain things that we wouldn't justify if we could see the full extent of our actions. While it may not seem immediately obvious, it doesn't really take much to imagine times when people did things that harmed us and to remember the effects it had on our reasoning and our psyches and perhaps what we then put back into the world. You know, it adds up really quickly. So while that was just sort of like, you know, set up, I guess, I think it's it, there's a really key idea in there for me. I've been looking forward to this camp all semester, Dex. Oh yeah, it's definitely close, huh? They're both doing the same thing. They just take turns. Is it because you like it? <laughs> I love how, oh my god, her head's so bad. Does that mean they actually failed the final exam? Dude, let it go, come on. All of you must be wallowing in shame! <laughs> they, like, forgot about you. They don't even know who you are. I guess now we're not technically rivals. This girl's power is bangs? <laughs> oh, it's a Manetta moment. It's like a buffet of bombshells. Dude, get yourself together, for real. For real, yeah. Everyone line up in order. Hands. Wild, wild pussycats. Finally, I need it off that bus. I need out of this hotel room. <laughs> Please. Your feline fantasies are oh, are these here. the pussycats? Wild, wild pussycats? Who's that? Little boy. The 
Pussycats were founded when we were kids, like forever <laughs> ago! Ooh, you just insulted their age. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure your math must be off. <laughs> I'm 18 at heart. We all are. We all are. Hello? Who is- who is this little boy, though? He confuses me. The training camp... <laughs> ...has already begun. <laughs> I hope my vacation goes better than this. Might as well get going. I held it, didn't bring a You're in a forest, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, there you go. Oh no. We all know that feeling, right? When we gotta take a leak and then get attacked by a forest beast. <laughs> They'll get permits to use their quirks if there's ever an emergency. And provisional oh, that's kind licenses of big. that will allow them to work as heroes. Wow, I thought they had to graduate. I'll kill you! <laughs> oh, Bakugo. Always with the killing. I trust that I can count on you, Pixie Bob. What is with this little kid? <laughs> it's bothering me. And I relieved all over myself. Oh, Mineta. I want to root for you, but <laughs> you make it so difficult. We have no choice but to cut through these woods using the shortest possible route. Let's go, Class A! Yeah! I spot three up ahead, and two flanking each side. So seven total. These superpower captions are putting President Mike out of a job here. Bonjour. Mike, so Yama got the finishing blow? I guess not. Stop talking about it. Just let it dry and like hope everyone forgets. Good, Hagakure. Perfect distraction. How did she see that? That was an amazing high five right there. Is this really the shortest path through the forest? <laughs> pretty cool quirk. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> How pointless to want to be a hero. Oh boy. <laughs> the litter is almost here. That took a lot longer than I expected it to. Yeah, they had to fight one of every dinosaur on the way here. I go give them these. Why is everyone in the show such a perv? She's not the age to take a mate. Uh, speaking of people's ages... Choose your words carefully, boy. Who is that kid? Right? What Thank you, doing? Deku. We're on the same page. <laughs> what a low blow! You fiend of a child! A punch to the scrotum is unforgivable! The last thing I want is to hang with some wannabe heroes. How long is this kid gonna be in the show? <laughs> I'm sure I'll warm up to him. We'll get his backstory, he'll open up, it'll be heartwarming, as it always is. Tomorrow, your training starts in earnest. You'd better get it. Tomorrow, you say. It looks so good! Time for shots of delicious anime food. Here we are. Hey, Kota, can you bring me those vegetables? Hey, Kota, can you take these vegetables and go far away? <laughs> Of course, Deku's got a medal. A bath full of boobs and babes, ready to be seen by yours truly. <sighs> Are you over there talking to yourself again, Mineta? This feels amazing! <laughs> He's just hugging the wall. <laughs> you're to stop this at once, Mineta! There you what go. What you're doing is demeaning for both the girls and yourself. It's shameful behavior! He can't hear you. He's somewhere else right now. It's because walls Don't do it. Stop. 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 Before you become a hero, you should learn how to be a good human. That's true. You got a point. Didn't need that. Oh. Ida did not deserve that. That was dirty. This is without a doubt the worst thing that has ever happened to Ida. <laughs> Thanks so much, Coach Babe. We owe you one. It sort of feels like weird. I don't know. For. The audience to get the the fan service like that after a moment like that with Mineta, you know what I mean? The rush from the fall likely caused him to faint. I don't think it was the fall. The last thing I want is to hang with some wannabe heroes. Why does it mean so much to you, Deku? Why? Of course he isn't alone. There are many in our society who don't approve of us. Okay, this actually is a bigger thing. Kota's parents, that is. They were killed while protecting citizens. Papa. 
Mama. Here's the backstory. How do you even begin to explain to a child that his parents died honorable deaths? Yeah, it doesn't matter to him. And all the while they were being praised, everybody kept telling him that his parents' sacrifice was noble. Yeah, I feel like this is something that's come up before in the show. This idea of total sacrifice is kind of a strange one, or at least it has a lot of potential for danger in it. It's really hard for me to figure it out because I think that idea of self-sacrifice is an important one, but I think the devil is in the details because first of all, what are you sacrificing for and is the sacrifice worth it? If you're sacrificing yourself for things that aren't really that valuable or that people wouldn't want you to sacrifice for, there's like a net loss there in a way, if that makes sense. And what is it connected to? Are you sacrificing because this really is the ultimate thing you can think to do or because you're looking for some kind of acknowledgement for who you are and what you've done? Or are you trying to rid yourself of some kind of guilt or something like that? And then this idea that I feel is a common mistake of thinking too grandiose, needing to be a, a named hero, let's say, or someone who does these huge things that are larger than life, when maybe the best thing we could be doing is not be seeking those opportunities, but to be focusing on being really, really good at our daily realities and being like good, honest, genuine people, especially as it relates to like our family, friends, community. And just on a personal level, from what I see sometimes around me, I see people with really good intentions focusing on really large scale problems. But a lot of times in discussing those problems, they can be really hostile. And to me, that sort of misses the point because while those issues are certainly important, we probably have a bigger impact in the in the micro areas of our lives than on the big problems we often discuss. So the hostility for me makes it feel like the lens is unfocused on what actually we can affect and what's important. And sometimes I think that reveals the fact that the motivations are not really doing the good because then why not do the good locally, right? And instead it might be something like creating a name for oneself or being in a position that one one feels gives one status, if that makes sense. So I don't know anything about this kid's parents, but I do understand the issue of focusing on the on the grandiose and missing the, the local. While they're out saving the world, who's looking out for the kid? Yet in that moment, I had no reply. Yeah, there's something beneath the surface. There's a little bit more to it than the nice, like everything's fine veneer. Our goal is to increase your skills exponentially so that each of you earns a provisional license. This will allow you to that face a lot the dangers plot that problems. continue to fester in the darkness. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Proceed carefully. Look alive, Bakugo. Try throwing that for me. Back to baseball. No one blink! Go to hell! <laughs> Go to hell. I guess we've upgraded from die. As you can see, your quirks themselves have not improved much on a fundamental level. <gasps> That's why we're now going to focus on improving your powers. <laughs> he's loving this. This will be so That's hard great, to though. feel like you're dying. At least he's honest. Let's hope you all survive. Nice. I love Aizawa as a teacher. You know, one great thing about that scene is immediately the kids are connected to what they're doing. He just connected that to an emotion. And the emotion is something like, you all suck. <laughs> but, I mean, it works. You feel it. Picking Bakugo is a good choice for that. And quirk development could be interesting. And credit scene. Hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey. From Tomura. He said we shouldn't do anything flashy. Yeah, he acted like a spoiled little brat when we first met. But suddenly he's begun to take charge. His pawns are not, not listening. We'll pull those false heroes down from their shining pedestals. And in doing so, we'll create a bright new future for this world. Yeah, they really don't have much unity, do they? So season three has begun. They made good on their promise of summer camp, although my envy for their experiences declined rapidly after getting on that bus. But I am very excited for this Aizawa training. The more Aizawa I can get, the better. And there has been a lot of buildup into the villains and the fact that the villains are making a big move. And they also seem to be growing an ensemble cast themselves. And with that, what is his name? Taco? The little kid. With his issue, although I feel like his character might be a little bit grating at times, maybe the suggestion is that finally we're going to start peeling back some of the layers of this, this everything's fine hero society and looking at some of the, the problems and the issues that have been there the whole time but haven't been directly addressed. We've sort of been leaning on All Might and the, the status quo for a while. That's very cool, very exciting to think that that might be explored in more depth. But yeah, so that's the end of the first two episodes of season three. I'll see you guys next time when the villains begin creating this bright, bright future world that they have in mind.